Hello and welcome to Massive Crit. I've been away for a while. I'm easy to forget, but I'm always back, baby, just like herpes. But anyway, we've got a brand new Kill Team box set coming out, and I'm super hyped for it, or, or am I? But anyway, it's called Shadow Vaults, so without any further ado, away we go. So Shadow Vaults has gone on pre-order already and it seems it seems a bit early. Well, does it? I think I think Into the Dark was released a little late. I think it was meant to go on pre-order the Friday after the battle report got um, released on Warhammer TV, which was the 17th of August. So about the 20th of August, um, that may have gone on pre-order, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so that's only, what, seven seven weeks away, something like that, so yeah, it's it's super early and I don't think I'm ready for it, I just, I don't, well, I know I'm not ready for it, but let's have a look at it. And there she goes, boys, I was only really expecting a couple of models to be revealed, like last time, but no, it was completely revealed last Saturday on Warhammer Day, or 40k day as it turned out to be, just like it should. But anyway, I was intrigued to see if we would get any Event Horizon Chaos style walls or like Necron Tomb World walls or anything cool like that. But no, we are getting the exact same walls as we got last time, but with a different narrative sprue. Super disappointed. But why am I so disappointed? What was it that GW said that got my hopes up so much? Let's take a look. I found two articles on the Warcom website that may help elucidate this. This reveal article for Into the Dark is the first, so if we just scroll scroll down like a pro YouTuber. So yeah, this is the sentence. So what's more, every box in the upcoming season of Kill Team is thematically linked, exploring the setting of Galadark further. You can grow your terrain collection throughout the releases, building up an incredible modular Kill Team board along the way. I suppose it is thematically linked because it is the, the same terrain as last time, so yeah, okay, and it is as modular as the last one, it can be combined with the last one because, again, it's the same, it's just not really what I was expecting to be the case after, after reading this the first time. Let's take a look at the second article. So the second I found is this What's in the Box article, and again, if I just scroll down, if you bear with me, to the ending sentence so yeah here we go so you get a massive collection of 54 individual parts in this box and it's almost infinitely expandable not least when the next set arrives three months later bringing with it a whole new set of compatible space hulk scenery a whole new set of compatible space space hulk scenery so it is a new set, but it's the same set. So I don't know, like when I was reading this, I was just like imagining like people coming out of the walls, like Bootstrap Bill in Pirates of the Caribbean. Like I was really like, I thought this was gonna be amazing. And the fact that it's just the same terrain, just, I don't know, puts me on a bit of a downer, but I suppose, Maybe the next sets will start getting this, and uh, maybe I'm just getting too ahead of myself. But enough about the terrain, what about the models? First up, we have the Kazakin, another guard faction. We've had Vet Guard, the Blooded, Navy Breaches, and now Kazakin. Well, Navy Breaches aren't really guard, they're the Navy, but, you know, they are pretty much the Astra Militarum. Don't get me wrong, I love playing the human factions in Kill Team. I played Vet Guard and now I'm playing Blooded. I'm going to do a running with the Blooded vid, which is coming out soon. I'm looking forward to playing the Breachers. And the new Kazakin do look pretty sweet, like Special Forces should. So let's just have a look. So we've got some kind of like Grenadier here, maybe with a Hotshot Vazgun. Got Gunner. Sniper, I don't know, medic maybe, like another gunner, like all specs guys, sergeant comms. So they're pretty much what I would expect from a human faction. And I do love playing these kind of 
factions. They're good looking models, but I just wish the poses were a little more dramatic. The show Cobra Kai does this so well. They're just a bunch of teenagers and senseis, but every one of them is dramatic and intense. And I want this to show a bit more on these models, just like an, an elite unit should be. They're just a little bit too laid back. Uh, maybe a bit too laid back and placid for, I don't know, he's looking pretty intense, so is he. But, I don't know. Uh, he's, he's looking a bit intense as well, but I don't know, just a bit more intensity, especially on the gunners. But other than that, I think they're a solid faction. Now, we have the Necrons, and I'm loving they're led by a Cryptek. More HQ choices coming into the game, like Wormblade and Warp Coven, so... I think that's really cool. Fantastic looking models. And it looks like we're back to the upgrade sprue days, but not not quite because they are led by a Cryptex. So, so this team is a little more than just a squad with an upgrade sprue. And I'm loving this Apprentec and the Plasmacytes. Plasmacytes, I think they're called. Um, but yeah, I think they're a really cool addition as well. I think they're looking really badass and I'm really happy with the Necron team and they're just prime for a kit bash just like the blooded were so if you want to see that let me know in the comments but um yeah it's a little weird that we have two more shooty teams for Into the Dark I would have expected more melee teams but yeah I'm loving the Crons and finally we've got the Shadow Vaults upgrade sprue for the terrain for the narrative campaign and it, it looks pretty cool I mean, yeah, yeah, it looks good. Uh, will I use it? I don't really play narrative. I probably should because I'm missing sort of like half the gameplay out of these releases. Maybe one day I'll give it a go, but I'm I'm probably not. I'm going to give it a go. So am I going to build it? Probably not. No. And uh, it's just going to sit there in the pile of shame, I think. Maybe it will go well with the Mechanicum terrain that we've got in Nakmund. Sorry, I just had to look round to check the name on that one. But yeah, maybe it'll go well with that terrain. I think it would. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. So there we have it. I'm a little disappointed with the terrain, but I can see, kind of understand why GW are doubling up on the terrain because they're trying to get kill team players to play 40k and that that is the new 40k boarding actions. And I don't really see the point of boarding actions if I'm going to play close confines warfare. I'm just going to play kill team. But I... I am a kill team player, not a 40k player, so it's going to be lost on me. And I'd love to see knights try and make a boarding action, that would be hilarious. As for the teams themselves, I'm really into them, I really am. I think there are some pretty cool teams, especially the Necrons, but I haven't even touched Into the Dark yet, I haven't built or painted any of it. I've been away for three weeks visiting family, so I haven't had any time for any of this. And I'm really into the Navy Breaches, I want to... I want to get to know them a little bit. I want to spend a bit of time with them, like working them out and seeing what their play style is before moving on to a new team. And when I do move on to a new team, there's the Galapox and Star Striders. They're both quality looking teams and I'd love to play those as well, possibly more than the Necrons and the Kazakin. And like Imperial Navy with shotguns fighting Gellapox, zombie mutants in space? Fuck yeah. I want to do some of that. So yeah, Gellapox is probably going to be next. Like Chalnaf, I think Shadow Vault is going to be a set that I'm going to miss out on. I've just got too much hobby to be getting on with already and it's just going to go to the bottom of the pile of shame and it's... I'm not even going to use the terrain. I'll probably sell that if I bought this set. Or it'd just be in the bottom of the pile of shame. It's just too much money to spend for that to happen. But then again, I do really want to kitbash those Necrons. I do already... I was planning on kitbashing a falling kill team and running them as legionary, and I bought all the sets ready to do that. So, uh, I don't know. Which one do you think? Do you think I should kitbash the Necrons next, or the Fallen as legionaries. Let me know what you think in the comments down below and I'll get on it like Sonic. I've got plenty more videos to be getting on with as well. Plenty more videos planned coming out soon, I hope. So thank you all very much for watching and until next time, may you always crit massive.